Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well. My name is Nargis Nasreen. So let's start today's class. In this class, we are going to talk about DCL, which is Data Control Language. So let's see. So in this, what we do, uh, we allow, uh, it allows us to manage right users in the database. So let's um, try to understand what's the meaning of this. Let's say that you have a company, okay, and uh, you sell products online. Okay, so you will have different customers, then you will have employees who are working in your company. So they, you have so many users as your customers and as your employees. So they are not going to have same access to your database, right? Your customers will be only be able to see the things that you are selling and how they can access all of those things. Okay, so their access is kind of limited. Then the employees who are working in your company, it's not like the whole website or the whole company is on them and they are handling the, all the parts. Because, you know, in handling the database is not that easy. We need a group of people. So it's, so some people will have will handle certain uh, part of the database, right? So this is how we, this is what we do in data control language that we allow the access to manage our database to the right users. And it's totally on us, like what type of access you want to provide. Okay, so there are two commands that we use. First is grant, and second is revoke. So grant is used to give the access, revoke is used to, you know, like to take the access back from that certain user. Okay, so like, uh, how we can do that? So first of all, uh, to assign any access to a user, there should be a username that should be registered on that server. Let's say we have this local server, we are going to work on the work page. So we have this local server, which is local host. But big, big companies, they have their own servers. So they are going to register the user and they are going to provide the username and according to that, they are going to provide access to it. Okay, which is also called as permission, providing permission to the users. So let's try to understand how to do this. And in this class, we are going to do the practical together because then we will be able to understand that. Okay. So let's start with the practical directly. Okay. I will uh, now use my workbench. Um, okay. Okay. So let's see what we are going to do here. So first of all, uh, I have opened the same file that we have, I mean, same connection we can see that we have used for DDL and DML commands. Here only we are going to see how to do it. So let's start. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to do, I will be making a user. We have to make a user and then we are going to provide access to that user. But before doing that, let me write it down that this is for this here. Let me increase the size so that you can see properly. And we have this customers uh, database. This is uh, on this we are going to work, and we have this table customers. And inside customers table, we have columns, customer ID, and purchase date. Let me do one thing. Let me add one more table in this. Okay, I'm going to add one more table. So I will just copy this line number four, and I will paste it here. And let's name this as sales. And I'm going to name this as sale ID. So we have this table with one column. So let me run this. Yeah, it is created. Let me refresh this. Okay, so now we have two tables inside the customer's database. Okay, simple. Let's go ahead. Now we are going to create a user. How to do that? So we have to write on create. Then we have to write on user. Now we have to give the name like uh, to that user. So let's me let's give that user as John. I'm going to write down John. Then we have to write down at and the server. We have this local host, so I will be writing local host. Okay. And now we have to write this identify by here. We are going to provide the password. Like every user will have their own password. So we have to provide the password. Let's say I'm going to write down 
John only as password or John one two three. Okay. Now let me execute this. So we have created a user named as John on our local server, and the password is John one two three. Let me copy this password because we are going to need that later. Now, so next, what we have to do? Let me show you. So we have to now make a connection. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about that later. Let's go ahead. Now let's talk about this. Like, uh, what are the access we are going to provide to this user, who is John? So to provide the access, we have to write down grant. This is the keyword. Then let's say I only want to provide select. Uh, that means the user can only select and see uh, the database how it is looking like and what are the things is stored. The user cannot do anything else like insert, update, delete, nothing. Only select. On now we have to provide on what? So I'm going to provide it on on database which is named as customers. And in that customers database, I will be only providing one table which is customers. This is why I created one more table that is called a sales. You will see what's the difference. Okay. To John at localhost. Okay. Fine. Let me execute this also. Yeah. This is done. Now, see, this is provided. We have provided the permission to John. Now, how to check whether the whether this user John will able to access this or not? Okay. So for that, we have to create this user. Now, how to do that? So let's go back to our main page, home page, and here I will be clicking on my SQL connections. Okay. Now, see, we have to provide connection name. Let's say John underscore. You can give any name. Now we have to change the username. Why? Because the username is John. Right? So be careful of that. Then password. So the password is John123. So I will I have I copied that password. So I paste it here. Now I'm going to click on OK. And then I will click on OK. And then I will open this connection. Okay, so now let's try to check whether this is actually working or not. So yes, it is working. Now let me show you how. Because if you see here, uh, see, only customer database is visible. And inside that, John has access to table customers only. See, we created two tables, customers and sales. But we mentioned that John will only have access on customer database and customer table only. So only customer table is visible. OK? And the columns, which is customer ID and purchase date. Everything is fine till here. Now let's try to write that. Let's try to see whether John is able to use select command or not. So I will be writing select. Let me increase the size. First, I have to mention that I want to use this uh, database that is customers. Okay, let me execute this. Yeah, this is done. Then I will be using select command, select star from customers. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we are getting this. This is what we did in the last uh, DML video. So if you remember, this is what we inserted. Now let me try to use different query, uh, which is not about select. Let's say I want to use update or delete. Let's use delete. Delete from what customers. I want to delete all the data. Okay, I will execute this. Now see, I do not have access. See, this query do not get executed. If you see here, I'm getting that this is not run successfully. Why? Because the access is denied to user John on this table because we provided only select as the permission. Right? So this is why we provide permission to the user so that they do not by mistake or delete everything or make any change to our database because there are so many important information is stored. So if there are going to be any small change, that will create a big problem. Okay. So this is how we do it. Now let's say that, uh, okay, I want to provide other access, other permissions to join. Let's say that John is now very much stable and he has command and now he is able to manage our database. So how to do that? 
So let's go back here and I will copy this line because we have to kind of use the same thing. I will be pasting it here. And let's say that I want to grant every permission to join. So I will be writing grant on, on customer, customer. So let's say that we want to grant permission on every table that is present inside customer database. So again, we have to write on star. Okay, and that's it. Let's execute this query. Yeah, it is done. Now let's go back and I will delete this one. Create a problem. Now let me execute this and let's see whether John is able to see the tables or not, which is sales table. Yes, John is able to now see sales table. See, right? So this is how we provide the access. And now John will be able to do other uh, query also like update, delete, truncate, everything. Okay. So yeah, this is how we do it. Now let's talk about the revoke. So revoke is just opposite of grant. Okay, so we take all those things that we have provided to the particular user. So how to write it? So let's go back to our code. And here we are going to, again, I'm going to take the same thing. I'm going to paste and I will be writing revoke. Revoke, select on customer, customer. We have to change to to from. Okay, so what will happen so that John will not be able to use select on customer table of the customer database. Okay, this is what the meaning is. So I'm taking the access from him and see this query executed successfully. So this is how we use grant and revoke because different users have different access. So according to that, you have to provide them the permission. Okay, so that there will be no problem in your database. Okay. That's it about grant and revoke. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the comments. But uh, if I say they are not used that much because uh, right now we do not have to worry about this, but still it's good to have an idea about it. So yeah, again, if you have any questions, you can always ask. So that's it from my side. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.